Well guys, I'm back in the UK and it's bright here. My eyes are squinty, but uh, I had an absolutely amazing time in America, Texas, Dallas. Uh, I need to go in and check the fish. I don't know what the situation is going to be like inside. Hopefully it's pretty good. I, I really don't know. <laughs> So I think the first thing to note is that everything, all the tanks are overgrown, except for the better sorority that we trimmed just before I left. That's like just starting to come back again though. It's not an issue though, to be honest, it's exactly what I was expecting to happen after you trim all your plants. Remember, you do get the shoots come up and there's two this time, and that's what I'm seeing in here. So yeah, everything's still looking really, really good. Oh look, the betters are doing that thing again. I told you about it when I trimmed it. They just hollow out this section and just sort of chill out and make their own little I don't know, their own little cave in there. But all the shoots, look, look at the top of that Rotala HR. Not you. Yeah, you can see they've got those little baby little sort of stems coming out the top. And it's the same, all the stems in the background as well. So yeah, what do we reckon then? Another three weeks before this is just chock-a-block again. <laughs> Maybe I start doing a bit more simple planting in some of my aquariums. That's actually what I did in one of my new tanks over there, the South American cichlid tank. And that's, that's all right, that's not doing too bad, except for one thing. It's so dark. Oh yeah, just take a look at that. Looking crazy, right? Oh, oh, flash placo, flash placo. Gorgeous, absolutely love that. I knew it, I knew I'd see them on like the sort of rare occasion. That's exactly why I picked them. Not like a standout thing all the time, but it's quite exciting when you do see them like that. Sorry, anyway, look at it. We've got some serious, serious tint going on. And as a result, we've got some major reflections as well, but the fish seem to be absolutely loving the tank. Look at the flagacara. The males have just, they've colored right up. Some of them are darker than the others as well because, oh yeah, they're like the alphas. Look at this one here. Look at those colors on it. Looking so good. All the keyholes are all out as well now. They're fully comfortable. And also the female, I think that's a female there. Is that a female Cara? It might not be. Um, it might just be a less dominant male because it has got quite a big dorsal fin, but not too big, it's not trailing. I think that's a female to be honest. All the Coreys, a big, big school of them still. They're all staying together. They look so cute. They seem to be really happy with this tank because I'm seeing them in the front all the time, which means they're so, look at them all on the rock. That's oh, such a cool tank. See, part of me just wants to leave the tannins because the behavior, hopefully I can just uh, dull it a little bit and take out some of it, but they all stay as comfortable as they are. Do you know what? I think it might be good to actually test the pH of this tank. Just see what it's sitting at because that's a lot of tannins and I'm expecting it to be in the mid sixes or, or like 6.7, 6.8, that sort of range. Comes out of my tap remember water at seven. So it's interesting to see. So the pH is sitting, I'd say around 6.8, 6.6, that sort of range. And that's what I was expecting, you know, with this amount of sort of wood and tannins being released, it's got to have lowered the pH. It has, and the fish are behaving brilliantly. But anyway, this is dark. It's, it's too dark in my opinion. I still want a bit of tannins, but let's just reduce it a bit, do a big water change. So I think that's looking really nice. It's not quite brown, it's more of a greeny yellow at the moment. I only did a 60 to 70% water change, which means that obviously when you top it back up, you're gonna have like a light tint still in the water. That's what we've got here. I still want some tint at the end of the day because this is going so well and I think it's down to that pH level and the tannins being leached into the water. What's awesome to see now though, look, the flag of car up, they're always coming out, they're always pushing into this foreground. There's another one there. They're all hit, well actually, I think they're getting used to me now for feeding time. Maybe we should do that actually. I'm gonna feed them now. Um, I wanna see all the quarries in that front area as well. There's so many of them. And I'm really keen just to get these cichlids to a really good size. I swear, I swear the keyholes are growing already and I've only had them like a couple of weeks, haven't I? <laughs> so I'm gonna go with the flake first, of course. Now they're not completely comfortable yet, so they don't start jumping up as I do it, but they, once it comes down, they'll start going for it. And I'll, I'll sit back, look, there we go. In they go. So the way I've got the outlet at the moment, it, it comes across here, it swirls around and comes back on itself, which is quite good, because the food just sort of stays in one nice area for them. And uh, then they just sort of dart at it from that section. Look at the flagger car, look, see? There's all of them out. All of them right there. 
<laughs> oh, it's so fun feeding in a tank that's got a good amount of fish. This is a good stocking level, I think, personally. Some people like to go a little bit less. I think this is just right. It looks like a lot right now, of course, because we've just put the food in. What about you little Corys? Where's the Corys? Need to put some sinking pellets as well for the Corys. I'll lay them all in the front here and they'll just, they'll drop where they want. The Corys are currently round here. I can see them coming around, come on. Then we have, of course, got the algae eaters as well, but to be honest, given the whiteness of some of these stones, they're collecting quite a lot of algae and they've got plenty of food, but I'm just gonna cut, put a couple of tabs in just to make sure. You know, for instance, we've got the good whiptail catfish in here, which I can't see at the moment, but I saw them yesterday. There we go, a couple in there. And we got some cool reaction, hello. Come on, right around here. They're all in the foreground, you can find them. The keyholes are really, really keen actually on the pellets, see? They peck at them, but they also, when they've gone through that lot, they also love to get the algae wafer as well. I've seen a ball of three or four of them just trying to go at those um, algae tablets, so I guess they like their vegetables as well. So all of the plants in all of the tanks are overgrown. Now what me and Kate are gonna do, there's Kate. Hello. She said hi. Um, we're gonna go around and trim all of the tanks now. I'm gonna set up a little station on here where Kate can sort of regroup the plants together. I'm gonna put them all down in that tank as storage. It seems too much of a shame. There's so many nice like stem plants here just to throw out. But before that, Kate is just going, what are you doing? I'm not sucking them, I'm sucking that. <laughs> oh, okay. Kate's cleaning out the water. She's cleaning out some of my plant tanks for me that were just like drips and drabs. It was, it's all, they're all in there. And then over here, she's also just really organized this section for me as well. We had some older ones that weren't doing too well. Uh, all these ones left are doing great. Look at this, Lobelia cardinalis dwarf which sounds like a Harry Potter spell, but it's not. We've got some other stuff there as well, some boosters, but yeah, all organized. Thanks, babes. But first of all, I need to get this area set up as like a plant bunching station. So the first thing to tackle is the rainbow fish tank. I mean, look what, look, how, how has this happened? You guys saw me do a big video on this like less than a month ago, month ago. it's gone crazy. So many floating plants as well, look, all the red root floaters, bag them up, take them to Maidenhead Aquatics. So I have done the whole of the, uh, the Rainbow Fish Aquarium. They are looking great. There's so much more room for them now. Kate is just organizing everything perfect. So she's cleaned up all these tanks down here. We've got, everything's organized. We've got like Lobelia cardinalis there. We've got Booses. There's a terrestrial plant that's falling over the back. Liliopsis brasiliensis. We've got all the, uh, all the crypts in this section as well. Absolutely loving this though. I found the best way to actually get the sag up, which is to grab chunks of it and just rip it and it gives it a sort of uneven rip. Some rip right from the base as well, which is kind of what you want, but who's got time just to sit there doing that? But I've got everything to like a sort of equal level. There's tons of swim room, look, the fish are everywhere. They can actually go all the way around again. Now I know I can do it that simply, I will just keep right on top of it. So over here, Kate did initially organize this section for me. Both agreed, these are way better tanks for scaping. Whereas those ones over in the corner, the plant ones are down low, they're hard to film. But these would be perfect to do some new scapes. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that is this tank looking absolutely brilliant. You can see this here actually, that's Monte Carlo. Uh, I did have it planted down the bottom. It just come up one day, I think the fish were pecking at it or something. Pecking, do they peck? I don't know, they got like kind of like pecky lips. Anyway, it floated up and I just lodged it in there a little bit and thinking, oh, I'll plant it later. But look at it now, it's got absolutely huge and it's spread everywhere, it looks so good. I'm just gonna leave that, that looks great. But the tank that I need to sort now, this one here. Oh, let me get the black screen. Obviously we get a lot of reflections. I know a lot of you say to use a polarized lens. It makes no difference with this level of reflection. So black screen it is. Okay, there we go. So <laughs> there is a lot of fish in this tank. Um, they're all sort of at the front always when I come near because obviously they think I'm gonna feed. They're so well trained now they think. They think it's food time. There we go, look. Um, but the thing is, right, all of the stem plants that I originally put in here, let me turn that down, are all now growing out the top of the water and it looks so good to me, but Kate thinks it looks a mess. Does it look a mess? 
She says this a lot. My angels, by the way, doing really well. This one's a little bit skinnier, eats less. I have to really like make sure I target feed that guy. These two there, looking so, so good. Look, look at them raring to go for the food, but this one's a little bit more shy, so I have to be a, a little bit more careful, but it's okay, as long as I can make sure he gets that food, hopefully, anyway, fingers crossed. But I really do need to hack it back, don't I? I just give them a bit more space. They've got space, they can go in the back as well. I mean, you quite often see them in these tiny little gaps in the background, they're not gonna let me see now, but look at that, look at the colors. Those diamond texture there, diamond neons they are, and they've got that like eye that just pops, and I think that looks fantastic. Oh yeah, and the red phantoms now. Great coloring on them. And even down here, though, there's not a lot of light down there because it's all being blocked, but they still look this good. Black phantoms as well, oh, gorgeous. And there is actually a ton of uh, Corys and things as well, but they won't come out until the, the food is there. They tend to be quite shy. As soon as food's there, that whole front section is just absolutely filled with like Corys and Plecos and Autos. I'll make sure I do that actually in this video so you can see, because it's actually really, really nice. Let's get a close up of some of these angels as well. Look, such good quality, I I'm loving them. It's made me actually want to do like a, 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 a independent angel tank, you know, a proper, a, what about an angel tank and a discus tank then? I think that'd be cool. So I've taken a load of plants out of the red tank here. This is the one that does have the female better in and all of these, uh, what are they actually called? Like white neons or something like that? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Basically they're the neon tetras, but they're like albino, but not. It, it's very hard to explain. Uh, yeah, there was a female better in here, but unfortunately it decided to jump into the inlet for the filter. I checked inside, well Matt actually was the one who sussed it out when he was here, looked in, yeah, it didn't survive. Bit of a bummer, it was a nice one, but um, yeah, that actually happened about a month ago. All the other fish are doing absolutely great though. The Corys look, just coming through, they're doing good as well. A lot of the plants down here have not had a lot of light because this whole top section was just fully overgrown and it was actually, all the plants were coming out the top, it didn't look too great. Now in an ideal world, I'd probably stop there with the trimming because that actually looks quite cool, but there's no point is there. It's just gonna be the same problem again in no time. So I'm just gonna trim it all the way right back, like really low. So I've taken an absolute ton out of that tank. Like it's literally cut right back. We might get algae issues if we just left it like that, but I've got all the trimmings up here. I'm gonna plant some of them, the best ones, just dotted them about in between some of the gaps. Get some of that red punches back, but it, it does look really cool even like that, doesn't it? You know, completely different to this tank next to it, which, oh my goodness, also just needs, yeah, coming right back again. I'm doing it though. I'm finally actually doing it, coming right back on all the tanks. So that is some great progress on a lot of tanks. That's the most maintenance I've ever done in sort of one go. What I mean by that is like how much I've hacked back. Now this one here is one that's gonna take a lot of work as well. Yeah, it's going crazy. Like there's not a lot of light getting through. The enders are doing really well, but I'd, it'd be nice to be able to see them, right? So I'm just gonna go to town on it. So there we have it then, so many tags have got sorted. It feels really, really good to actually get on top of things. And I am particularly pleased with the Tetra tank. Look at how good that looks now. I sort of compromised with Kate because she was saying, take all of the, of the plants off the top. Well, I sort of trimmed it halfway back and still kept a load of these plants growing at the top because I just think it looks so good. But now we've still got all nice lit up air in the front. The fish seem really, really happy all like 500 of them or whatever it is. The colors now as well are popping a lot better because obviously the light's coming down to the bottom, which is nice. Angels looking great. 
as they were before, but like really, really great now. The boosts in the foreground, they've been flowering. And over to the side here, we've got this Ludwigia Plusius coming right forward and getting some great color on it as well. So we get some color poking through the green as well now. Now I maybe should have gone to town a little bit more on this tank because uh, I didn't trim this foreground section. But overall, I think it's looking good. It's serving a purpose. This tank is more like a farm tank for plants so it doesn't need to look like like a scape tank all the time you know when i want to pick out some stems i can just go in like those in the background there and just clip them and take them like these ones well at the front this uh this is basically like giant pearl weed effectively well i can just come in and trim a section and use those on another tank if i just trim them now though then they'll be done won't they and i won't be able to reuse them so yeah the point of this is farming and obviously some really cool fish as well oh what's quite interesting actually is that it turns out one of the females of the sword tails was actually a male because didn't have that tail showing before and now every sort of week the tail is getting bigger and bigger well, eventually it's going to be like this one here look at that Doing. the no filter end the tank absolutely perfect really happy with that there's actually way more babies in here than i first thought as well i couldn't see them obviously before but now there's there's loads and loads of them showing um i thought some of them are being picked off but it turns out they're not at all and how good is the red tank looking look at that it looks so good it's actually a day since i trimmed this one and put the uh, red plants back in and they're already standing upright and they're going to be full, full again like really shortly but that's fine i'll stay on top of this time and I'll, i'm going to kind of trim it in in like a bowl shape at the back there i think that'll look good the foreground plants the uh cryptocrine albida is it something like that that already looks great so i didn't touch those at all the fish far more active now and in the foreground they look fantastic as well don't they with that light hitting them so yeah all in all i'm really happy when i first walked in that door i thought oh this is a lot of work but when you actually knuckle down to it i've not done too much of the filming as i've been doing it more of a time lapse it can actually go quite quickly and i'm going to keep that in mind every time now we're there we're on it everything's going great 